you survived Thanksgiving? Or are you still, <laughs> still eating turkey leftovers? Oh, I, of course, want to share with you that we are preparing for Christmas uh, spiritually as well as as um, practically speaking, you know, with shopping and and so on and writing out Christmas cards, maybe. I think we send more text messages today than write Christmas cards. Uh, <clears throat> and um, maybe making out your Christmas list of invitees to your, to your home. Uh, but spiritually, we really want to be deeply preparing some for the coming of Christ. Somebody asked me today, Father, do you think uh, the... Uh, the second coming of Christ is is close. I said, well, one thing we can all say for sure, he's a heck of a lot closer to coming than he was 10 years ago. I mean, let's face it, time passes, and the closer that moment comes when he's going to uh, call us all back home. And that's part of what we are supposed to keep in mind this Advent season that we're begging him to come and take us home. Um, We don't like the idea of how we get there. Usually it means dying, of course. But uh, anything as long as we're going home, Lord Jesus. I I was going to do a couple of different things today. One is to remind you, now as you watch this, I hope, it's still true, at the MJR in Waterford at uh, the movie theater, The Chosen is still playing. Uh, That is the first two nights of the third season of The Chosen. It's playing in the theater. And it's done very well, by the way, uh, across the country. What a great, great evangelical tool. So though you can be eventually able to see it at home, um, you know, by uh, uh, (coughs) bringing it up in a on your Netflix or whatever, uh, I think it's good to support this effort in the theaters too because we're we're helping to pay for um, the rest of the series. Um, but you will love it. It's just, I can't speak highly enough of it. So try to see it if you can in some theater. It's playing in only some chosen theaters. But by the way, two weekends ago, it uh, netted or gross, I'm not sure which. But anyway, uh, $65 million. Uh, what a terrific idea to show it in our local, some of our local theaters. So I wanted to encourage you to do that, go to that. Then uh, we have a, a little column in our parish bulletin that says, Ask Father Jim. And that is, if you have questions of one sort or another that you want to put to me, and I can answer them in either my column or here on podcast now. Um, I'm going to start doing that. So uh, please feel free to to uh, write me, text me, um, any such questions. Two widely divergent uh, questions today. Uh, one has to do, one uh, lady says, Hi. Oh, this is Carol, and she said we could use her name. She said, we seem to have adopted the Lutheran um, version of the Lord's Prayer at Mass, and also the God is good all the time, God is good. Uh, What have we adopted from our Orthodox brothers and sisters? Why aren't we trying to join with them more? Um, Not a bad question, as a matter of fact. First of all, in the Lord's Prayer, I, there are volumes we could say about that prayer. The, the fullest uh, text of that prayer is in uh, Matthew chapter, uh, let me see, chapter 6. And as the prayer ends, verse 13, the more modern translations do not include the doxology, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory. Um or some texts since the Middle Ages, especially uh, the King James Version and the RIV, I think, uh, at one time, 
included the Lord's Prayer after that verse 13 in chapter 6. But now um, even those texts, I'm not sure, King James may still include it, but um, most Bibles of, uh, you know, produced by any denomination anymore uh, don't include that text. So uh, we can't call that a Protestant prayer necessarily. The, the meat of that prayer, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever, is all through Scripture. You could take one of those words at a time or one of those concepts at a time out of that prayer and trace, trace it all through the Psalms, the books of Chronicles, letters of St. Paul. Uh, so <laughs> it's not a Protestant thing, so to speak, except that we Catholics are accustomed uh, to not including that in our, in our Lord's Prayer, except at Mass now. Uh, so we have come to perceive um, this is a, a Protestant prayer. And if it is a Protestant prayer, it's a beautiful one. So we share. There you are. Uh, and the God is good all the time. God is good. It's just a way for us at our church here and some other churches to greet the people. Uh, it comes from a movie, I think, uh, is God dead or God is not dead. Um, and it's it was fun for a while. I hope it isn't getting just a, a, a boring ritual again. We might stop it for, for a few weeks and pick it up again, ask people to bring it back. But it's just a way of greeting one another and greeting God at the beginning of Mass. I know once upon a time, we did not take those kind of freedoms with the Mass, and uh, maybe we still shouldn't. But... Sometimes it's a great help to bringing people together to include a prayer, a saying, a greeting that is somewhat off the cuff, um, but still very much um, praise, praising and honoring our God. Um, and then the question that Carol asks about uh, why aren't we doing more to include Orthodox uh, worship within our own? Well, believe it or not, we've all, we've all come from the same roots. Uh, Orthodox didn't come about as a separate thing from the Western Church until maybe the 11th century. So we were all sharing the same worship, and we do right now, as a matter of fact. Uh, the only thing about the Orthodox worship is that, um, well, language. Um, it's, uh, you know, pretty much... Uh, some Aramaic, uh, some some of the Eastern languages are prominent in their worship, and not so much at all the um, the American English. So uh, the ritual is basically the same. It looks different because um, the uh, Orthodox people do things uh, different within their worship: more bows, more genuflecting. Uh, more, uh, maybe you might say, exotic vestments, much more incense in the ordinary worship, as a matter of fact, uh, than we do. But these are not substantial elements. Uh, we are very much alike, the Orthodox and the Western, the Western worships. Um, then one other lady asked me, uh, about dust unto dust. I think I'll save that for later, if not for Lent, about cremation. But uh, it seems like a, maybe a bit of a strange thing to go into now as we are approaching Christmas. So I might hold off on that. I have to share with you finally um, a little book that somebody gave me a couple of weeks ago in the congregation. I always wonder when somebody gives me a new joke book, you know, if there's a message. But um, remember that the jokes I share, most of them, <coughs> excuse me, you've given me. So this book is called Wasn't It Smart of God to dot, dot, dot. And it's written by Steve Chapman and his family. The Chapmans, especially Steve, are um, uh, strong Christian musicians, writers, 
uh, instrumental uh, instrumentalists. And so when the family goes on vacation, they would share some of these kind of ideas to keep the kids from getting bored. And the, uh, some of their friends and relatives have shared some of these also. Wasn't it smart of God to, and you can tell where kids are more into some of these than adults. I know I'm going longer. By the way, somebody says, yeah, hey, Father, it's longer than five minutes. I know, but I'm hoping you're sticking with us. Yeah, and I know you stick around for some of the, These are not so much jokes, but some of them are hilarious. How good of God to make our nose holes go down instead of up so that when it rains, we don't drown. Okay, a little. Another one, how good of God to put our feet as far as possible from our noses. Isn't that good? How good of God. I have two or three more now. Hang in there. Don't turn me off. Uh, the teens might appreciate this. Uh, wasn't it smart of God to make us so that during our teen years, we have lots of little pimples instead of one big one? See how good God is? Or how good and smart of God to give us lips so that when we kiss, our teeth don't bang together. I just thought you'd like those and appreciate them and share them with friends. God bless you. Bye now.